Welcome to Hawk Podcast. I'm Mike Netzer, joined as always by Data Center Hawk founder and CEO, David Liggett. Hello. How are you doing this morning? Great. Good to be here. All right. Before we get started, if you haven't already, take an opportunity to subscribe to this channel, to Data Center Hawk uh, YouTube channel. As well, you can check out the blog series of this uh, Data Center Fundamentals at datacenterhawk.com slash blog. All right, David, so today we're talking about the importance of data center location, both for yes. those who would like to potentially build or lease. Yes. So let's talk about just, you know, give me the elevator speech of why is location important, and we'll dive into some of the individual factors that yeah. impact. Well, that. I think one thing, it's, it's interesting to see how in our industry over the last, you know, five, 10 years, and, and really I'd say a lot of it has to do with the emergence of cloud uh, technology, how companies are utilizing cloud, you know, you think, hey, well, we can, you can really build a data center anywhere, right? And so that mindset has kind of created a, a maybe a, a thought around location that it doesn't matter where you put your data center infrastructure. And, and you see like Microsoft, Google, Facebook, they're building data centers in Iowa. Yeah. Nebraska. You bet. Ohio. And it seems like, well, okay, they can do it. Sure. We could be anywhere. Yeah. But and so why I is that not the case? Yeah. So I think it really has to do with what you're as a company, what you're trying to accomplish and, uh, you know, how that where that location fits with the users that are utilizing those applications. And so, uh, you know, location really matters as it relates to what type of business application you're putting in the market and how you want that to perform over time. Mm. Whether you are, you know, utilizing co-location, whether you're utilizing a cloud instance from, you know, the groups that you mentioned in different parts of the country with different regions, uh, or you're, you know, a big uh, organization that's building, owning, and operating your own data center. So location certainly is an important part of every data center IT infrastructure decision. And I think we'll get into it, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited. I think the, and this, you know, I, I, I come from this world, you know, of, hey, where do you put, you know, where from a market perspective do you put a data center IT infrastructure location, where from a co-location, you know, side of things. And so that's really what we built our platform around was to try and help people understand, you know, how locations matter, how markets grow, et cetera. So I'm excited to talk about it. Yeah, in, in case people don't know, your background with CBRE, I mean, you, you undertook projects where you looked at markets across the nation yeah. and did a, you know studies in depth you know to figure yeah. out what what makes the most sense and so you certainly got you know skins on the wall to have this conversation well, if people weren't already aware of that so okay so let's talk about you know first of all like just just the cost standpoint so what are some of the cost metrics that would drive you know the decision of where to again either build or lease space yeah i mean the, i think most people in our space know what the the costs are associated with but if you're just getting into the industry uh, you know, one of the biggest things you have to focus on when you think about this is 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 power and, and the cost of power. I mean, that's, you know, typically depending on your size, that's a direct pass through to the end user. So, you know, if you're in a market that has, you know, a 10 cent kilowatt hour cost of power and you're in another market that has five, you can do the math, but it's, it's a big difference. So that's one of the costs. Um, you know, any type of like fiber or network availability is, is a big cost. And, and you know, the, if you're in like a major market, you know, Northern Virginia, Chicago, Dallas, Phoenix, Atlanta, Silicon Valley, you're going to be in areas that have very dense, very populated areas from a fiber perspective. But if you go into maybe some secondary markets, you know, that might change and that will could cost you more based on, you know, who's there. So that's something to be considered when you think about just the natural hazard risks and how you protect yourself, that's something from a cost standpoint to, uh, to consider. We've seen, you know, if you're an organization that's building, owning and operating your own data center and you've got to go out and buy a, a land parcel to, to do that, we've seen the land prices in a number of different markets increase over the last three to five years as the data center sites become less and less uh, available. Uh, you know, when you are finding a site to build a data center on, it's proximity to power, fiber, lack of risk, all those things that you need, those sites aren't everywhere and they're, they're few and far between. So all those things are at a high level, some costs to consider when you're looking at these decisions. Yeah, talk a little bit more about, you know, economic incentives. You've said yeah, many sure. times on this podcast, yeah. if you're a, you know, a city, state or, you know, county, <clears throat> it's the 
quickest way to spur development in your area is to tweak those levers. Yeah. Power costs aren't going to change very quickly over time. Land costs aren't going to change very quickly over time. So, and those can impact both the builder, operator, and the end user. So, talk a little bit about in economic incentives and how those impact costs. Yeah. Ten years ago, there were a few states that were focused on attracting data center opportunities with incentive policies that would typically benefit a company that was moving in and, and could essentially abate the sales tax on the IT equipment. That's typically the biggest part of any type of data center infrastructure, uh, you know, economic incentive package. There's other parts of those, but now we have a very ma much more mature approach from a number of different states across the U.S. There are some that, that do not focus on this, but over the last three to five years, we've seen some states I never would have thought would have done anything that have made some changes that I think have been advantageous. A good example of that is the state of Illinois. And they have done some things from a incentive side of things. Actually, we just did a, a blog on this that you know details what those are and how that's impacted both supply and demand. And so that's a big part of it. You know, the other thing that I would mention, which which I, I was thinking more from like the building side, but if you are leasing the economics around, you know, your rental rate, and the your partnership with data center operators certain markets are more competitive than others so you're going to have more options uh in a market like a dallas or chicago than you would in a market like minneapolis or kansas city and so typically these are you know the most sophisticated data center operators in the world these are the top of the line facilities and they're they're very aggressive in from a rental rate perspective in getting companies to come and, and lease infrastructure. So if you're someone that's actually taking your IT infrastructure into a co-location facility, the rental rate is something that you're obviously going to want to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. Be, and, and I think that goes to like, if you're coming into this space from the real estate perspective, one of the most important things to realize is like our industry runs by how much power infrastructure you lease, not the square footage. Mm -hmm. So that's typically the hardest thing for, you know, real estate minded folks <clears throat> to get their minds around is like, this is not a square footage game. Although what is happening is in a, a building that is, you know, typically 10 times more than your traditional office building, but it is around power infrastructure leased. All right. So let's moving into like more of like the strategic side. And so cost is certainly a part of the decision matrix, yeah. but a lot of it is really, you know, there's other, there's a lot of other factors from a strategy standpoint that would drive, you know, people to a certain location. Right. So talk a little bit about the, what are the components of that, those strategic nature of those decisions? A lot of it, depends on the companies themselves and where their where their portfolio is located and how that might play into maybe a larger decision making process so if you are trying to diversify which power grid you're on if you're trying to diversify which area of the country that you're in i mean those are some things strategically to think about from a location standpoint is just how portfolio sits uh, and, and where you know if you're trying to mature that over time location wise where you need to be to, to do that. Another thing just from a strategic standpoint is related specifically to, to risk. And you know, when I was doing this with uh, CBRE, one of the things I always thought about is, you know, this is like a company taking 250, 500 million, sometimes a billion dollars over a 15, 20 year period and placing that money somewhere. Mm. And so you're going to want to put that in a place that is lo as low risk as possible. And so you have to think about things like you know, what is going to happen from a natural hazard risk perspective. And so you need to think through things like seismic risk and uh, tornado risk and natural, you know, uh, natural, um, we can edit this, right, but, you know, fire risk, like wildfire risk, like things like that, that typically you wouldn't maybe think about. You have to think about man-made, you know, hazards that might take place, you know, proximities to highways and rail lines and things like that that might impact your ability to serve the data center with your your team that's working there if some type of an event occurs so from a strategic perspective those are some of the other things to consider to make sure number one you're in the right market that makes sense and number two you're at the right site that makes sense and each company has a different level of risk tolerance that they would want to be okay with or they feel comfortable with and at least in my experience you know we found that some fortune 500 companies had very uh, strict, you know, risk profiles and other companies didn't. It just depends on what type of business you're in and how you as a company view your IT infrastructure. So if you're, I understand, I think it certainly makes a lot of sense that if you're a data center operator, you would want to have a 
national cover. In your national, you want to have every market covered because that's where customers are. Right. But if you're a an end user like a a bank or an e commerce site or what have you, that you know, what is the what drives them? Why do they need to be in multiple different cities? That's yeah, a, that's a question I'm trying to ask. A lot of, I think, if you're a financial company, a technology company, and you stream your service to you know other uh, or to individual users in different places, I mean, you're thinking about what business application you're putting in the market and how well it performs. And, and you know, a lot of that has to do with latency to end users itself. It's a lot of the reason that we continue to hear a lot about Edge, which we talked about on a couple of podcasts ago. And those are the type of things that companies are processing to understand what locations make sense so that their applications perform well. And that's why the data center operators are trying to be ahead of whatever that uh, demand will be to position themselves to handle that over time. And so I think it has a lot, like you mentioned, the financial uh, company example. I mean, I go back to like, if you're, if you're delivering an online banking platform, mm -hmm. which you've never delivered before, you know, and there might be, you know, there's transactions being done on that platform, you know, a millisecond of difference makes, you know, can make a big, big difference. So I think a lot of it has to do with the way that these applications perform and companies are trying to evaluate where can we put this so it does the best for the customers that we have on the platform. Yeah, and no, I think, and you've, I think, been primarily focused on like larger users. I think with smaller users, the answer can be a lot more pragmatic. Yeah. And if it's a small IT shop, just one or two racks and a guy's just moving out of some community college or a small business location and they're just going to Colo, like it may be as simple as like, I just don't want to drive that far. I plan on being out there once a month. I don't want to pay the company to handle it or have a specific needs that I only I know how to do. Yes. And it's just basically like, I just want to drive less than this. And yeah. so I think, you know, that is, it brings up a point. We just added this little feature on our site where you can basically drop a pin where you are and then see like what's close to you. Yeah. So again, that, that, so it's, again, a lot of companies have very strategic, very sophisticated teams handling this, but at the smaller side, it's just kind of be like, Hey, we have a site here. We need a backup site over here. Yeah. We just don't want it to be that far away. Yeah. And a lot of, the analysis that's done can be, you know, based off of straight line distances from one location to the other. Mm. So if you said, Hey, we need to be in like a, a five mile, you know, either radius or, or distance from our current office location, that's an important part. A lot of it sometimes can hinge on how the network ties back to that individual facility itself. So all those things, whether you're big company or, you know, small company are legit factors. And to your point, it, it's if you have a team that has to be at that location, travel time and understanding what that is, is an important part of it. It's a material cost. So, all right, lastly, you know, talk about like, we've talked about like how regulations can impact this. And we've seen this across several markets, yeah. you know, globally. So, you know, talk about how that plays into, you know, this is typically more of like a well, no, I guess it does impact leasing and building. I was going to say it impacts mostly building, but it does really impact leasing and building. But talk about just some of the different regulatory environments. It's different than tax incentives. Yeah. Uh, impact that those decisions. Yeah. I mean, all states, cities, countries, you know, are imposing certain regulations to try to make sure that the development that takes place in their areas serves their communities well. And some areas you know, have more of that than others. So, you know, one of the things that we know about, like a, a, as an example in the U.S. and the state of California is the permitting process, the environmental process takes a lot more time than it does in some other areas. And that is why, you know, areas like uh, Hillsboro and in Portland, you know, continue to grow uh, because there are companies that go, hey, we, we don't want to either spend the time now to wait on this capacity to be delivered or we want to be in a lower cost market. So, uh, the regulatory environments certainly can impact development timelines where companies want to go. There's issues sometimes from the tax perspective. I know that there were some, you know, just recently on the, the, the ballot in California, there were some uh, questions around like how uh, data center facilities would be taxed that, you know, brought up some uh, challenges. So I think that's part of it. And then I think as you get out of the U.S., like if you think internationally, you know, here in the U.S., we think kind of as a country and for the most part, easy to think through like state by state and somewhat businesses is, is somewhat the same. You know, in Europe, it's, you know, or internationally, it's significantly different because of the regulatory environments that are there. And, and that can be a challenge in, you know, some of the markets. And I, I, I bring that up because I think that's where 
you're going to see a a lot of growth in the next two to five years. You know, Europe, primary, secondary markets in Asia. And so that's certainly something to uh, be aware of as, you know, you either watch that market grow, you're participating in that growth, or you're a user and you need to grow there. Yeah, and like the most extreme example of that would be like Amsterdam, who said, you know, for a right. period of time, right. we don't want any new data center construction. Right. And they said, we just, we don't like necessarily the aesthetics of how it impacts the skyline, the power usage, et cetera. And so they put like they literally hit the pause button. Yeah. And so that uh, that brought development to a halt. Yeah. <laughs> but you know again so, but yeah that makes a good point. But like you said like the European state you know specifically around like GDPR yeah. or just can companies house information in certain places are they subject to different rules yeah. if they house them in certain places. So, all right. So anything else on on importance of data center location before we wrap this thing up? I think it's one of the things that can as we depend more and more on the cloud side of things, it can be forgotten, but it is really an important part of what you're doing uh, as a organization that's trying to mature your infrastructure as a data center operator, you know, where you spend your capital is the most important decision you make as a, as a company. And I don't think this is going to decrease in importance. I actually think it's going to increase because of the, the value that companies today are placing on their IT infrastructure and what they're using it to solve. Mm-hmm. You know, especially if you think about this period of time we've been in with the pandemic in 2020 and how that's been a, a, a challenge. It just makes your ability to serve customers and your own company with your internal IT infrastructure that much more important. All right. Well, great thoughts. Appreciate it as always, David. All right. Well, thanks again for listening. This has been Data Center Fundamentals, the importance of data center location. Uh, Again, you can see a little bit more information on some of the tools we talked about at datacenterhawk.com. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.